Hello and welcome to Mr. Clark After Dark, everyone. My name is Lucas Clark and I am a certified educator with Alberta Education and the Alberta Teachers Association. All conversations and interactions exchange is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. In no way does the content discussed intend to be in violation of the ATA Code of Conduct or meant to target any individual student, teacher, or to belittle or demean the profession in any way. If you have something that you would like me to discuss or have a story of your own to share, please reach out at lucasrdclark97 at gmail.com. You can also send a direct message to me on Instagram at Mr. Clark After Dark. Hope you enjoy the show and please do not forget to subscribe. And now, on to the show. Hope you all enjoy. Three, two, one, yeah. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mr. Clark After Dark. Today I have on a part two of my conversation with the one and only Stacy Bailey. Stacy is currently a secondary humanities and CTS teacher who has been in the profession for more than a decade. On part two of our conversation, Stacy and I discuss playing devil's advocate for teaching time the current teaching climate, how the teacher shortage is actually shedding the teacher comparison lanes in a positive way, how we both feel like we don't know what we're doing most of the time, dealing with changes in your family, our religious family upbringing, how quaintness should be encouraged more often, how chaos is our new comfort, body count culture, how you are definitely going to hell if you have piercings and don't even think about using scissors on a Sunday, How the weirdest part of growing up is realizing your parents are just people also experiencing everything for the first time. Marriage, what she would want her obituary to say, how I am weird for Googling my own family's names, and much more. Thank you all for tuning in and hope you enjoy the show. When it comes to the amount of time, it's like technically, I'm trying to play like devil's advocate a little bit here. It's like if I have 12 hours of planning and marking every week, I'm technically only under contract for like 32 hours a week. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I've tried to come around to the sense of maybe the evening work is kind of a part. Because like if you're teaching from 830 to 325, mm-hmm. I mean, most people are te- are working either four tens if, if, if they're not like doing no, yeah. no more shift work. Yeah. Or they're working from like 830 to five. Yeah. So it's like that kind of extra work is not necessarily extra now you'll have different classes with different levels yeah for sure but what are your thoughts on that yeah no and i don't know i don't know if this is where you're going with this but especially right now in our current climate with teachers and the shortage okay yeah there's a little i'm not saying i have this yeah i kind of do yeah um there's a kind of an attitude where it's like okay i you know i don't have every single thing done at like a time where i think i should and yeah it's like, what are you going to do? Fire me? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's it's actually the fact that your job security isn't threatened yeah. by trying to be like perfect all the time. Yeah. The perfectionism thing is, well, that's the thing. Once you start getting into creating a profession of perfectionism. Yeah. That can be. It just takes all the fun out of it. It's, and it's going to be exhausting in different ways. Yeah. That's just not going to contribute to actual learning. At all. Right? Yeah. So. So. How often do you feel like you have no idea what you're doing? Um, <laughs> say like a solid 78% of the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like some, I, that's another weird part that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Like I have this <clears throat> like fabricated idea of when I'm, a, f- a fresh 19 year old going mm-hmm. to my first history lecture and being in awe of my professor for two hours and loving every minute of it. Yeah. I'm like, this is how it's going to be. Right. Every student's going to feel and learn like I'm learning right, right now. And then, like, you deliver that great message. So you think. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're just like, there's 19 kids on their phone. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know. And you're like, I'm. where did I go wrong? Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's it's a weird uh, like expectation. Yeah. I think of mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. So I'm gonna shift gears a little bit here because we're both we kind of touched on the Newfoundland part a little bit. We are related. Yeah. We, we are, are cousins. Yeah, yeah. We are. I've we made are. it known to pretty much everyone I hear. Like, Me oh, too. Yeah, like so Ms. when Bailey, you first <laughs> came, I was nervous. I'm like, you know, like we were like closest kids, and then you know, just life. Yeah. Well, yeah, just and that's, whatever yeah. geographically, yeah. whatever we, you know, 
didn't maintain that same closeness. And so then I was like, oh my gosh, is he going to think I'm like a weirdo if I'm like, oh, Mr. Clark is my cousin. Well, I think it's also, I think it's naive to think that your family is static. Like yeah. Your family is going to be the same thing forever. Because like, I mean, you became a teenager mm-hmm. and I became a teenager. Yeah. And like we weren't going to adventure club That's right. every week. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like, most kids didn't go through adventure club like yeah, we did. We really, yeah. yeah. We, and so like we were probably but we were more involved in like consistent things at the same place. That's right. Which is why we were had more contact. Yeah. I just I don't think it's I think that's also a weird pressure to like expect everything oh to be gosh. the same all the time. Yes. And like I think the more that you can just kind of accept that things are going to play out yeah. and how you react to it is kind of how you're going to feel. Yeah. And like what's gonna keep you stable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's good. So we both grew up very religious. We did. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't mind sharing, how has your relationship with religion changed over time? Well, first of all, yeah. I'll just say I hate that word. Okay. What word? It's like religion. Okay. Because I yeah. just feel like that's how we were raised, right? Like yeah. religion and it's just yeah. rules. And rules. It's, it yeah. just felt like, and I mean, I'm fine. Like I think I turned out okay. Yeah. And I'm not like, I don't ever want to. Use these buzzwords like I'm gonna have religious trauma. Or I'm gonna- I I totally agree. I, I think that it almost kind of removes the nuance from it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So yeah. I, no, I don't feel like that at all. Um, if anything, I'm like, hey, my parents probably saved me from a lot of. <laughs> Absence is awesome. <laughs> Absence is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going yeah. Um. No. Yeah. So in a way, I'm like, okay. So I didn't go out and party. I didn't like. Yeah having all these boyfriends it was just yeah yeah so just living life yeah, yeah. and uh, i loved it it's I, very quaint yeah yeah what's wrong with quaintness really Why, quaintness is underrated yes well okay think about right now like so many kids in the school that you just love like they are just good humans yes and their life is just that it's just quaint, quaint. like they're yeah <laughs> i know and when you see them you're like it's so they're they're so few and and far between that you're like yeah. oh yeah like that's yeah a good kid <laughs> So, you know, like I like to think I was that good kid yeah. for my teachers. Like, why, like, don't, why can't you just wake up on a Sunday morning, your homework's done, and you want to read a book? Yeah. Why is What's that? wrong with that? And what's, there's almost like the promotion of a culture of chaos mm-hmm. oh, that totally. I think like it's kind of been in like our 15-year period. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know if it's kind of always been the case. I mean, you hear about the 80s and the 60s, whatever. But like kids are growing up at a time when you're constantly on your phone. You're constantly vaping. Yeah. You're constantly. Popcorn lung, what? Well, like the number one thing I hear all the time is body count. Oh, my gosh. And I'm just like. Yes. That is such a crazy. Yes. What? Yeah. And so, but it almost like. I'm just trying to make that connection of. Like, what did the upbringing that we have like keep us from right and and like what did it because some people would argue like oh maybe it was too overprotective mm-hmm. but like how protective is overprotective yeah right the, it's it's a fine line yeah. and i feel like i'm going through it right now with yeah. my own yeah. too and i'm like how because you know like growing yeah. up oh my gosh wearing a belly top absolutely not <laughs> a piercing oh my god <laughs> Okay, you're going to help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not really. Well, then, <laughs> just purgatory. Nothing serious. <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. Um, I will say, I don't think my parents were like that strict as some other parents okay, that yeah. I, yeah. but um, yeah, no. So now I'm like, okay, if my kid wants to wear a crop top, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's modest <laughs> is hottest. Cause that was a yeah. big thing when I was yeah. growing up. So yeah, I, I feel like I'm kind of trying to figure that out for my own life yeah. now and yeah, but I mean, yeah. really, again, like, I don't really think it, I don't feel like, oh, I missed out on so much. I missed, yeah. like, I- I'm fine. Well, and that's, that's very, that's very refreshing, actually. Because I find, like, I thought about this a lot, because I don't really talk about um, religion that much in mm-hmm. my classes. Right. Like, it really just doesn't come up, which I also think is strange. Mm-hmm. Like, is there any way that you kind of blend, like, religious experiences, like, into your teaching? Because I think that's, like, a big gap. And like kind of the education in general is that we do not talk about just different religions. Yeah. Or like there's no like mandated kind of course. Truly. Yeah. That's right. Not yeah. in the public for sure. Yeah. Um, 
Not really. I mean, like a little bit last year in Social 8, you know, mm. when we were talking about the Renaissance or in the Aztec unit, kind of like that, but not really. Yeah. Um, sometimes if I do the Alpha Club, remember? I sat in okay. on one of those last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. started it this year. I'm yeah. like, I'm too tired. Yeah. I just, <clears throat> just want to eat my lunch. Like, yeah. You know? In um, But yeah, if if things like that do get brought up, like some, yeah. you know, last year it would be like, oh, Alpha Club is happening, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then they're like, what's Alpha? And so then I'm yeah. like, but again, like it's I, yeah. it's weird that like you're expected to be like all the time as like the main kind of yeah, contributor, like, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, because I'm I'm I always just like kind of make fun of the classic religious things. That, like yeah. it's like you can't go outside on Sundays. Absolutely not. That was like because we talked about like liberalism and freedom. Sure. And like, how many of you have like strict religious parents? Yeah. And, like, what's the craziest thing that you've ever been told to like not do? Yeah. Um, but. I would say the no scissors on Sunday <laughs> oh either. That gosh. was the other one. No cards. No cards. Well, no cards ever, really. No Not cards, playing cards ever. Yeah. yeah. Like you could play phase 10. Right. And skip, All day long. skip bow. Tell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell the cows come home. Yes. Thank you also for saying skip bow, not skip -oo. I know. I have started to um, oh change my tune on okay. that a little bit yeah. lately. It's but yeah. so triggering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Again, to preface. The things it, that matter. <laughs> really. Let's talk about. <laughs> it's so, yeah. Again, do you know what? Again, my parents weren't that strict. I was allowed to just do whatever on Sundays. Like, okay. I think I even caught a couple of matinees. Like, it was wild. Oh, okay. I know. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, no, it wasn't really that strict for me. Okay. But, yeah. Well, yeah, it was weird. It was like when I, I always say to everyone, because I think it was just gradually, again, your parents are doing their best with what they've been taught. Oh my gosh! You, if I you see don't that take all the time. an empathetic perspective, even if you're, if a student was listening, like the weirdest part about growing up is like realizing your parents are just people. Okay, I saw this thing on Instagram last year, and it just shifted everything. That's yeah. like, this is also your parents' first time doing everything. Yeah, like just like you're a kid and you're seeing everything for the first time. Yeah. so are your parents. Like they're just trying to yes. keep you alive <laughs> yeah. and be food, a good hopefully. human, yeah. right? So. Yeah, that's, yeah. And it's, I almost find that empathy that you develop is trying to not excuse your parents for mm -hmm. what they do, but understanding that like they are filtering life as best they can. Totally. And that can be a hard thing for a lot of like people to kind of grasp because yeah. like, mom and dad, they're supposed to be kind of the savior, right? Like they're right. supposed to be there. They're supposed to be rocks yes. that are ready for you all the time. Yeah. But like they go through their own things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but like I always say the number one thing I had in high school was I could do basically whatever I wanted. Yeah. I, if I want to take the truck, yes, go until 5 a.m. Sure. But if I had a sip of alcohol. You're done. My sunny boss. You're you done. You were gone. <laughs> yeah. Gone. Gone to jail. Yeah. He's gone to jail. In a handbasket. <laughs> In a freaking handbasket. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I don't know, like I'm wondering, are there certain things that were kind of like absolute no no's that you kind of shifted off of for kind of like what you would try to instill to your kids? Because I think maybe I'm a little bit more on the introspective side on this part because like brother was a pastor. Yeah. And like religion, I guess, kind of was more present i guess yeah. in like my immediate kind of everyday life in that yeah. way i don't know where, i don't really know where i'm going with that but no, no. um yeah do you have anything that you're thinking of um hmm. i don't think i would i don't think there's anything that i went through that i'm like oh i would never do that to my yeah, kids okay. yeah. do you know what it, it's like anything okay it, whether you're brought up in a religious home or not yeah i think the things that my parents kept me from yeah. any good parent would want to do the same yeah. you know like my parents didn't want me um you know, the dating thing was kind of like whatever. Yeah, it's also yeah. just personality. Like I wasn't a kid to like yeah. test the waters. I just yes. wasn't. <laughs> I was a goody two shoes. I was a yeah. teacher's pet. I was all the things. So I just <laughs> didn't ever, I was never like, oh, is the grass really greener on the other? I just yeah. was kind of like yeah. rules are rules and I'm not going to break them. Well, that's interesting because like you, you got married at the ripe age of 21. 21. 21. And so how long were you guys together before you got married? So I was 17. Okay. So I was in grade 11 and Greg moved here. He just graduated. And so. Oh, like two years older. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep. Two years older and, uh, you know, big site job. Oh, yeah. Just like 
Oh, you know, yeah. I was like grade 11, 12, had this boyfriend making site money. <laughs> he could like <laughs> take me down to campus oh, yeah. and buy me, you know, like Roxy clothes. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, this is it. This I've is peaked. Life. <laughs> I've absolutely peaked. So, yeah. Quaint. Total, Quaint. Again, yeah, again. Like. You know? Um, bought me my first pair of True Religions. That was... Oh. <laughs> I love Iconic. It. Fat Farm. Oh my oh gosh. Man. All the things. Bring back those brands. Although they are making a comeback. Um, is Fat Farm? Or is I don't know. True Religion. I've, true Religion. Religion. They've kind of always been around. Yeah. But, sadly. Well, which was, I thought it was crazy because I remember, well, Jordan, when he yeah. first got at site, a $500 pair of jeans. Oh. And I'm like, no problem. Oh my gosh. I, I don't I even know. understand like how crazy. Like I, I went to, I was like Jack and Jones. I had one pair of pants. Okay. So like my, my anti hoarding, yep. I was just like, oh wow, screw it. Okay. Throw. And so, and I had like three or four pairs of pants, but yep. like I had my one pair. Okay, right. That I was like, this is my. You go-to. were like banking on. They were extremely skinny jeans. Oh, okay. whatever. I was okay. like, you know what? They're Vulcan. I'm living life. It right. is what it is. I went to Jack and Jones, and like the two, I, it was two pairs of pants, and they were three hundred bucks. But I paid. Gross. It was like two ten for it. Okay. So like they were really nice pairs of pants, and but I got them like thirty. Uh, but I was, I think I was in the store for half an hour. Right. And I was just like, do I do that? Do yeah. I do? And then it's like, oh yeah, five hundred bucks, one pair. <laughs> like, Easy. <"That's- laughs> oh my gosh, we like yeah. so again because I got married yeah. when I was an infant. Um, yeah. <laughs> we were well, and just- so even like I still feel like an infant, but then yeah. I see kids who are like 18, 19, and twenty yeah. now. I'm like, you are a child. Yes. You are so little. Yes. And it's so it's, you, wild. it's almost. I always talk about like when you know when you see ultrasound pictures and mm-hmm. like you see like how like little their arms are yeah. and stuff. I'm like, that's how you looked to me. Right. Like you literally look like an infant. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. So I can just imagine everyone that didn't grow up like me, that yeah. they're like, oh my, you're 21, you're getting married. Yeah. But I don't know. Again, like we kind of just grew up together. Yeah, yeah, we made stupid decisions like with yeah. our money. We're like, whatever. We're going to go to St. Lucia and Las Vegas for our honeymoon. Screw it. Do it. Screw it. Uh, yeah. But you know, well, no, whatever. that's, I think that's. But that's still in the presence of, because I guess where I'm going is like, I was, I think a month after I turned 18, mm-hmm. I'm or 19, I met Cassidy. Okay. And so like we've been together since we were 19. Oh, okay. And now this is on year eight together. Yeah. And. But isn't that so weird saying that? Like you're not even crazy. 27 and you're like. Oh, yeah, I'm on year eight. Yeah. Almost a decade. You know, I know. Five. Like I've been and, with this, like, so I've been with yeah. Greg for like half my life. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, like, that, that is, weird. is weird. That's weird. When I turn thirty-four in June, yeah, it'll be like, oh yeah, half my life. It's crazy. Wow, I know. But I guess it almost seems like there's a like pushing away from that now. Like yeah. divorce rates are going like crazy. Mm-hmm. And do you think it's almost like the marriages that start when you're younger kind of typically last longer? Like I don't know. I guess like I don't know. It's a. I'm not trying to be like, what's your advertisement for marriage? But it's like, yeah. what is the? There's very much a reluctance of even like, again, like the body count culture is yeah. just wild to me wild. in terms of. Even if like students, not even just students, and like the people who are young adults trying to like get into a relationship, almost feel like, oh, if I get into a relationship, I'm gonna miss out. Yeah. That's weird. I know. That's a weird kind of way yeah. to orient yourself. And like, I don't know if this is still like, you don't want to be a simp. You don't want to be, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I always hated that word. but It just, I find, I have like a moderate lisp. So I'm like, anything that starts with an S, that's slang. Oh, I just refuse right. to say. Yeah. And then. Um, I'll say it for you. Simp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then my parents put an S in my name. It's the whole thing. Oh, great. Um, and then, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I don't know. I find students are relationships seem to be the biggest struggle yeah for sure even yeah. amongst themselves like you're seeing like um like fewer and fewer uh people are like getting married staying in marriages mm-hmm. you're seeing like peak levels of loneliness for like young adults high school students yeah and so i guess kind of wrapping that background to teaching is almost you're looking at like relationships are the most important part yeah right yeah yeah uh, and not to get too deep, but again, no. like I think with like my faith and like my upbringing, that's one thing that we were taught. It's like we're not designed to do life alone. Yeah. And so I think I just try yeah. to bring that into like everything that I do. It's like, yeah, okay, so we 
I, I enjoy being in relationship with other people because yeah. we're not we're not meant to do life alone. That's yeah. how what I believe. So yeah. that's kind of how I yeah. And so everything. what was your like? So earlier you said that you have like a craving for like adult presence. Mm -hmm. When it's like it's summertime, it's two months pretty much without your kind of normal routine. Yeah. Or even on like your mat leaves. Like what was that like in terms of when were there moments that you were like, I just need to be somewhere else with other adult people? Like what kind of leads to that moment? Oh gosh. Well, mat leaves for sure. It's hard because you're just, it's just pretty much you and a baby and you're at home. You're like, ugh. Um, what is that like? Because I, because like, it's wild. Yeah. Take a pat leave. Do it. Greg yeah. did it. Greg okay. did it. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. So it was kind of like, well, it was good. And then other times I was like, you need to go away. I need some space. Okay. Right. It's like, like anything. You spend too much time with someone and yeah. you're like, Ugh. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think just, it just got so mundane. Like, it's like repetitive. Okay. Every single, and don't get me wrong. I feel like that makes me sound like a bad mom. I do love well, that. But well, it's almost, it's a weird expectation to also think like you're going to love every second of every day with your kid. And you That's, just don't. Yeah. Like you just don't. Like sometimes it's like, yeah. this sucks. Like what are we, yeah. again, I, not that I know, but, like, no, but I'm just trying to think of, yeah. No, it's yeah. truly, my oldest has given me a run for my money. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, sometimes I'm like, I just need, I personally, I just think I'm a better mom when I work. Because I have oh. that time away. So then when I'm with them, I'm like, okay, this is going to. That's a good way. Of, I don't, that's a good. It's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Like that. My mom was always a stay at home mom. And I'm like, there was days when, you know, she was like screaming yeah. at us and freaking out. But I'm yeah. like, she killed it. And that's like, yeah. she did a good job. Yeah. But for me, I'm like, I can't. It's too. Mm -mm. Yeah. Even when I was on mat leave, every day we're like, we need to go to Superstore. We need to go to Dollarama. I just had to get out of the you house get every out of the day. House. I'm not a homebody. Yeah. I'm not a homebody. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. What do you uh, want your obituary to say? Oh my gosh, you're going there. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, so this was a weird thing the other day. Sometimes, have you ever just like Googled your family's names? Just like, no? That's not just the really. Thing. Not I was just like, I'll, I'll put in like Lynette Clark. Okay. Or like Jordan Clark. Okay. Just for whatever. I put in my, because like you were just see, like, I, I always just think it's weird. How many other people in the world have your name? Yeah, okay, maybe. I, that I just kind of weirds me out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. are other Lucas Clarks up to? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Right. <laughs> Tell me you have no life no, without just... telling me you have no life. <laughs> 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 this guy well, <laughs> needs to get out. <laughs> I need to stop being a homebody. <laughs> right. Um, but I guess, <laughs> like I put in like Bradley Clark. Yeah. But the second thing was his obituary. Okay. I was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. It was like, this was like two weeks ago. Weird. This was a weird moment. Weird. And I read his obituary and mm -hmm. it was like, like, loving father, loving husband, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. It's that's, weird. So I'm just wondering like, is what is, you can kind of get into the like cliche, what's your philosophy of life kind of thing. But like, what do you, what do you, what makes life worth living for you? Like, what do you want to be remembered for? Again, it kind of goes into that cliche, but it's just how I approach everything. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I hope that I just loved everyone and kind of gave yeah. everyone a chance. And yeah. you, like, it yeah. sounds so yeah. cheesy, oh, but yeah. I like to be liked. And even if, yeah. you know, and I just want to do that for other people. I'm like, I don't know. I just think everyone yeah. is going through stuff. And it's like, if you can just be a safe place for people, then. Do you do you think that maybe do you ever feel like maybe you're kind of over crediting that they might be going through something? Because I kind of do that too. I'm like, how much should I assume that they're going through other things? Like everyone all the time. Like at what point do you kind of move beyond that? I guess. And I'm not just like I'm even just thinking about it, kind of on the fly here. Yeah, but, no, yeah. for sure that is hard because yeah. then you know I'm thinking like, okay, well ultimately like. We are here. We do have a job. We do have yeah. things we have to get through. So yeah, I I think that's hard. I think um, you know, you give students a couple chances, but then after that, it's like okay, no, we need to yeah. And in life, the same thing. You know, it's like give people a couple chances, and then if things go awry, mm -hmm. then okay. Have you ever thought about leaving teaching? I think there have been like 
short periods where I'm like, oh, I could, you know, I could go make way more money than this or I could yeah. go do whatever. But I don't know. There's something that just yeah. keeps pulling me back in. I don't know. I don't. And, you know, I know it's like just the classic teacher, like we don't get paid enough. We don't da 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 da. And I'm kind of like, I'm over that. I kind of. Sure, I'm not going to complain if they give us a raise, but yes. I'm yeah, just kind of yeah. like, whatever. It's tired. It's tired, yeah. and uh, I, I think I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying that. But, no, no. Um, oh, yeah. well, and so, and I almost find another, out. another edit, kind edit of edit that out. No, <laughs> I, I kind of a surprise was like there is a lot of negativity, and I just a lot. find a lot. But again, it kind of comes into that mirror neuron thing because every yeah. time I I leave a conversation mm -hmm. of negative talk, I feel worse. Oh yeah, and I don't. I guess like. I don't want to get too much. Uh, it's like, what are the things that we do to ourselves mm -hmm. that makes the job more difficult as yeah. a group? Because I'm, everyone needs to bend. Yeah. And that's not what I'm trying to say that you can't do. Right. But sometimes the verbal diarrhea like needs to be more carefully selected. Yeah. Or even right. just like, oh, like I, I had this conversation in Edmonton with another teacher last mm -hmm. year, he's just like, I just don't understand why anyone would want to get into this profession. Okay. Like, I was like, oh, cool, man. Oh. That's sweet. Like, nice to meet you. I'm Lucas. Shoot. <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah. And it just, I don't know, it comes across very, like, disheartening. Yeah. And it almost makes me feel like, okay, well, then what are you? Well, then why are you here? Like, if you yeah. hate your life that much, yeah. surely, like. Yeah. And this is someone who has. Like a pretty well established career. Really? And I thought it was very interesting why they were just immediately like going to the absolute negative side. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's that's too know. bad. I don't know. I think if well, you are gonna vent like that, just have a small group of people that you do well, it to. Like so it you can't be your whole personality. You well, you talk about like first, that's exactly where I wanted to go. Like type A versus type B. Oh my gosh. What does that mean? I'm type Z. Okay, so what like, are the, I don't so even know what the types are because like I also always hear like the blue pill, red pill thing. I okay. have no idea what that means. Okay. And so when it comes to the type A, type B, it's like you're just kind of ill. Is that kind of kind of yeah, like type A is so are you saying like specifically type A teachers? I don't know. I, I so Or like a type A personality. I sure. think a type A personality yeah. is you're very organized, very structured, yep. very like everything is always in order and your life just is it like different things looks, that make you uncomfortable? Is that kind of the difference? I don't maybe. Like yeah. yeah. Maybe like chaos would make you uncomfortable. But mm -hmm. I think it's really that. It just comes down to organization and just having all your ducks in a row all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And that's so not me. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't, like, I've tried. I try to make myself. I can't. Yeah. It's just not who I am. Yeah. No, and that's so, yeah. I don't see any reason why that can't be the case. But yeah, um, um, have you ever thought about going into admin before? Uh, 100% no. Okay. Mark it here. Never, <laughs> never, never. Sometimes I think like I could go into like maybe being a school counselor, but oh, then I just feel okay. like Ugh, already like I take so much of that stuff home, like yeah. mentally it wears on me. So I'm like, could I really do that? And then sometimes again, I think that like I could just go back to being an EA because I loved it. Um, but for now, no, I'm go I'm really good where I'm at. Yeah. So. And. Edmund, no. It do, it doesn't seem it's a thankless job, which is yeah. really sucks because the people that do it are like I don't think anyone knows how much they're actually doing mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, it's all a right. lot. Well, I have one more question for you. Okay. Miss Bailey. Okay. I always end off and we've we touched on it a little bit here so far, but another great quote that okay. I like. Okay. Education is what remains. Once we forget everything that we learned in school, hmm. what is it that you want your students to take away from being in Miss Bailey's class Whoa. specifically? Oh my God. Where is that from? That's so... I, I don't actually know. I think it was maybe Einstein. Couldn't okay. Die, or some guy in like the 1800s. I don't sure. Know. <laughs> yeah. One of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah okay. I think uh, I just want them... I mean... I don't think, well, currently, I don't think anything that I'm, well, maybe. In my mind, am I, teach, am I teaching them to be a critical thinker? Yeah. Because, you know, you're going to go on to post-secondary and you're going to be challenged. Yeah. So I think that's a really good skill to yeah. have. Also, I kind of think that's just 
like innately are you a critical thinker? Yeah. So I don't know so really how much I being can. A, what does being a non-critical versus being a critical thinker mean to you? Because this is like. I don't one of my know. Favorite I, topics to discuss. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I feel like I'm not smart enough to answer yeah. this question. No, no. Oh but my like, gosh. so I guess I, it's like you're trying to teach them how to have pause. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And not like actual pause, really. Right, right. <laughs> no, none of that. No. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think to me, like, okay, if you're a critical thinker, can you see both sides, respect both sides, yeah. still have an opinion, like, without being a jerk? Yeah. Um, and then if you're, like, not a critical thinker, you're someone who just kind of is like, eh, go with the flow, whatever. You don't yeah. really take, like, a firm stance on anything. Um, and, yeah, I just think that's important. I'm like, I want yeah. the kids to be able to do that, no matter just what it stay is. stay level. And like yeah. learn to be level. Yeah. That's kind of what I think. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. And it's not that deep. It's I want the kids <laughs> to learn that. Like I'm absolutely not going to die yeah. on any hill yeah. here. Like I'm not. There are not. no. Is that, is that like a Christ reference? A hill to die on? Oh my gosh. I never is thought it? Of that oh my gosh. See, it's just like. See, the epiphanies are just coming it's, through. I know. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Miss Bailey. Of course. It's fun. <laughs> Hey everyone, thank you all for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Just wanted to say again, if there are any issues with professional conduct and or you would like to share your own story, experience, or have something you would like to contribute to the show, please do not hesitate to reach out at lucasrdclark97 at gmail.com or send a direct message on Instagram to at mrclarkafterdark. Hope you all enjoyed, potentially found something of use, and of course, please do not forget to subscribe. See you guys all next time. Unless you're scared.